In all types of art, whether it is two-dimensional, paintings, drawings, prints, or photography, or three-dimensional, sculpture, ceramics, metalwork, and architecture, there is a common thread that binds them all together. This universal element of art is known as form. Even other art forms such as dance, music, and poetry have common structures that can be broken down into basic principles that they all share. However, for the purpose of this essay, I will stay within the confines of two- and three-dimensional inanimate art. This art always exists as a finished piece, such as painting and sculpture, as opposed to art that has a distinct beginning and end that relies on the combination of many instances through the passage of time, and in some cases, the culmination of those instances, such as music, poetry, and dance. The formal elements of art can be categorized into two main groups, physical form, which refers to the details and makeup of the subject matter, and composition, which refers to how the physical forms are positioned relative to each other and the frame or confines of the workspace. The basics of physical form are line, shape, color, light, and texture. All art contains all five of these elements to varying degrees. A beautiful white stucco wall may be considered art that is only texture. However, lines made by the trowel create flowing shapes that are pleasing to the eye. Light and shadow plays on the ridges and recesses of the white stucco. Even white can be considered a color, as it's technically the mixture of all colors. All the elements of design can be found in even the simplest art. Line can be the actual lines that make up the basis of a line drawing, or it can be the line created by the edge of an area of color, also called the contour. Shape is an area that is de defined by the lines and contours. An easy way to understand lines and shape is to draw a circle or look at a ball. While you draw a circle, you are creating a line. Once you finish the circle, you have created a shape. A ball, although a three-dimensional object that does not have an actual line around it, has a contour that our eyes see as a circular line that separates the ball from its background. Color is used in art to simulate reality or imagine fantasy. Using colors to produce a realistic image is an art form in itself, as the slightest variation of color can make an object seem unnatural. However, in many forms of art, that is exactly the point. Color also conveys emotion through the instinctive psychological effect that different colors have on our mind. I often wonder why cool colors such as blue and green are calming, and warm colors such as red and orange are exciting and sometimes irritating. It becomes clear when we look at the world around us and how our environment has an effect on how we react to it. On most days when we look outside, our vision is filled with the green of the land and the blue of the sky. It's peaceful, it's quiet, it's calm. Since this is what we see and experience most of the time, we've become accustomed to put the color and emotion together. The complementary colors that we don't see so, as often in abundance in nature, the oranges and yellows of fire, the red of blood, are all signs of immediate and potentially fatal danger. These connections become more apparent when we think of most of the people that have lived on the earth and how they spent much more time in elements than we do in our sheltered, sedentary lives. The connection between color and emotion can only be from cause and effect conditioning by the color of nature. Texture in art takes two forms, the actual texture of the medium used, such as thickly applied and built up paint, to the smooth surface of a bronze sculpture, and implied texture. An example of implied texture is a flat, smooth painting that has no physical surface texture, but by using line, shape, and light techniques, clothing may appear rough or a vase may appear shiny and polished. Light, as an element form, is generally used to produce realistic effects in a two-dimensional drawing that actual light has in our three-dimensional world. Light, its complementary shadows, and the shading in between is essential to give a two-dimensional object an implied three-dimensional shape by defining its contours that face the viewer, as opposed to the outlining contours, and then placing it within a painting in a realistic way relative to the other objects around it. Implied light source placement and intensity has just as much importance on the quality of two-dimensional art as actual light used in photography and in sculpture display. Many sculptures are created with a certain intention of where its actual external light source should originate. Even two-dimensional paintings can be better appreciated under the bright lighting conditions. One modern artist that comes to mind is Thomas Kincaid. Many of his landscape paintings have a soft sun on the horizon, a warm light shining through windows. 
These paintings are beautiful by themselves, but when displayed in a dimly lit room with a soft light focused directly on the implied light source of the painting itself, instead of evenly across the entire painting, an eerily beautiful effect is created that pulls the viewer in even deeper. It's my guess that Kincaid pers purposely created these paintings to be displayed this way. The use and placement of all these forms together in a final work of art is called its composition. A simple, although not perfectly accurate way to describe the principle is that in nature a tree is a form and the forest is a composition. Or maybe I can't see the trees for the forest. Is that better than having my nose so close to the details that I can't see the whole picture? The viewer of a work of art must be sufficiently educated in art to appreciate its composition to the fullest, lest he misses the point. The composition of a work of art can only go so far when training the viewer's eye. Balance, scale, and proportion, repetition and rhythm, and unity and variety encompass the effects that the placement of formal elements have on the final composition of art. Balance is how the forms are distributed within the boundaries of the work, creating equilibrium or disharmony. Scale and proportion pertains to the relationship between formal elements, generally shapes, and how their relativity affects each other. Repetition and rhythm defines the elements that help to draw the viewer's eyes around the work. This path of the eye can also be defined as an implied line within the category of form. Finally, unity and variety gives the viewer a sense of completeness in the work, or a sense that something was unintentionally or intentionally left missing. An example of the former may be one frame of a tripic that may seem odd by itself, but is complemented or completed by its counterparts. When these basic elements of art and principles of design are better understood, the artist will create more significant works of art, and the viewer will begin to appreciate art to its fullest potential. Nevertheless, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and what you take from art is what you get. But art is not meant to be something that you just look at and think, that's nice, or that's not nice. It's meant to open up your mind to new possibilities of imagination, to give you a different outlook on life, to unveil a glimpse into another soul and to generally enrich the lives of those who take the time to understand and appreciate it.